Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Great. All well? Ready to learn more about the process of hypnosis? And the main topic for today would be suggestibility, or at least for this session. Suggestibility tests. Has anyone heard of suggestibility tests? Okay, good. And as the name implies, what, what do you think they're all about? Suggestibility. How suggestibility is the client? Okay, good. All right. So it's, it's basically to test how suggestible is your client and how much they would follow your instructions. So we really need a client that can focus, can follow instructions, so that they're good subjects for hypnosis. Now, what we, you, we know that when a client first approaches us, we build rapport as much as we can. We try to figure out uh, what's the best uh, method to approach them, whether they're visual, they're kinesthetic, or auditory. So suggestibility test um, gives us an idea of how much they're into hypnosis and how much they are willing to go with what you're going to tell them next. And you build trust. When, when you do a suggestibility test with a client, you're building trust and you're eliminating all their fears on, well, if it's a good hypnotist that I've chosen or not. Or, and, and once they trust you, it makes life much easier. Okay? So, and there are so many types of suggestibility tests that you can do with your clients. And they're basically under two main categories. Uh, they're um, either authoritarian or more on the soft side. So again, depending on what your client presents themselves to be, you decide whether you want to be authoritarian or more of a soft-spoken you know, approach. Okay? So, Mainly, they go under two broad categories, authoritarian or the soft approach. And we're going to have some examples and some demos done here just to give you an idea of such a stability test. The first um, example that I'd like to go through, and all this material is in your manual and you can refer to it anytime. And the scripts are also there. So Feel free to refer to the script. It's it's okay. I mean, if you have a script lying down there, usually I have those pockets in the in the seats where the client sits. So you feel free. They're handy. I mean, you can just keep it aside and you can go through it. If I mean, you're not expected to have everything in your memory, so a handy script would help. Okay. So the first um, example that I'd like to go through with you is the vise. Test. So if we can all stretch our hands and lock. Okay, good. Now, I want you to stress as much as you can and put your concentration on the first knuckle that appears to you. And you imagine yourself punching into a wall and stretch with all your strength, all the strength and all the ability. And your hands are so interlocked in a vise that you can never pull them apart. They're so hard, they're interlocked. And I want you now to try to pull them apart and you figure out that you just can't. They're so locked in a vice. You try, you go ahead and try and pull them apart and there's no way, your knuckles are turning white and there's no way you can pull your hands apart. There you go, excellent, okay. Give you breath and relax and then you. So if your clients really follow what you're saying and they do as you tell them to do, then they are suggestible clients, and they are a good subject for hypnosis. Now, who you can think of people who can really follow instructions? Mm -hmm. Military. Military? Mm -hmm. Athletes. Nurses. Athletes. <coughs> Why is that so? Because they're used to following instructions. They're used to pop, 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 one, two, three, four, and there you go. Okay? So this was a test of an authoritarian type of suggestibility. Now, there's something that I always like to tell the clients. The use of the word try is very negative. I mean, when you, when we, we always fall into this trap. We tell our kids, try to do your best, and try to do this, and try to, and all it does is the brain is just subconsciously only trying, okay? And there's a very nice example that I'd like to show as well now. If you can please volunteer, Casey. 
So again, the effect of our words on our brain and how much the power of the brain is. Okay, I want you to stretch your hand out. And I'm going to push your hand down. And you're going to resist me, okay? So push your hand all your strength and you resist me. You go ahead and resist me, resist me, resist me. So the, I'm pushing with all my effort and I can't push your hand down. Once again, stretch your hand out. I'm going to push down and you're going to try to resist me. Okay? So try, 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 try to resist me. <laughs> and there's no way that you can resist. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so this is another example also of suggestibility so, and the effectiveness of the words on uh, what we do. Now, another reference in, your, in the manual is to the uh, fallback test or the sway test. And unless you're really, really strong and you can handle the client. Pablo, can I have you here for a second? Of course. Please? So, <laughs> so this is basically, again, to, build, to have the, the client build trust. But... There is no way I can ask oh, no. <laughs> for such a suggestibility <laughs> test from Pablo. So it, the way it goes is that you just step aside and you make sure your knee interlocks here, okay? And you ask them to imagine that your hands are like magnets and you're going to be attracted to the magnet and go all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. So you stop because I can't handle you. <laughs> Okay, so they fall back and you'll, you'll support them and then they trust that you can really hold them back and this is again another nice example of suggestibility. Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, so subjects like Pablo, no fallback tests. Okay? Fine, so this is basically what I intended to convey on suggestibility tests and so once this is done, done it's, it's a little bit of fun, especially with kids. I mean, kids love suggestibility tests. You give them the pendulum, and there's reference to that in your notes as well. Uh, there's the, uh, the balloon test with kids. The helium balloon can be used with adults and kids. So we can go into this in details. If, if you need any advice, further advice on that, I'm here to help you. Um, so it's fun. It builds trust.